الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات عمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد I would like to welcome all of you my dear brothers and sisters, sons and daughters and my dear respected listeners I hope you all are well and your families and your loved ones, may Allah preserve you and protect you and all of us, Ameen. We're going to continue, inshaAllah ta'ala, reading from this book, this is the second class, Masharhi al-Sunnah, the creed of Imam al-Barbahari, the explanation of the noble Shaykh al-Allama, Salih bin Fawzan, al-Fawzan, May Allah preserve him, I mean, and protect him and give him sound health. <coughs> I mean, in the previous class we talked about mainly uh, a brief yani, biography of Sheikh Al-Imam Barbahari and Sheikh Saleh Fawzan, and some points of benefits about the importance of the sound creed that every Muslim should be upon. We continue by the muqaddima, the introduction that the Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan has given before he began to explain this book, Sharh al-Sunnah. <coughs> After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending the Salat and the Salam upon our noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members and his companions, he says, <clears throat> this book of Al-Imam al-Barbahari, and his name is Al-Hassan ibn Ali ibn Khalaf al-Barbahari, and he was uh, named Barbahari because of Barbahar. He said, it's a type of medicine, or perhaps the Sheikh said that he used to, that it used to be his trade, and that's what he used to do for, for living. That's why they call him Barbahari, because he used to sell the Barbahar and the like. <clears throat> he is one of the great scholars who adhere to the Madhab of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal rahimahullah. As we learned before, in the previous class, he learned from uh, some of the main students of Imam Ahmed rahimahullah like uh, Al-Marudi, Ahmed ibn Muhammad ibn Al-Hajjaj ibn Abdul Aziz Abu Bakr Al-Marudi, who died in the year 275 of the Hijrah, <coughs> and, uh, and other than him. And uh, Imam al-Barbahari was known with the knowledge, his firmness upon the Sunnah and calling to it and defending it. This book we're studying is its name is Sharh al Sunnah. It's two words here Sharh and Sunnah. Sheikh, he can explain the Sunnah first. So, what it's intended because this, this term Sunnah we hear it a lot, but what does it mean here in this book? <coughs> is the way of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, his entire way of life and worship and belief it is not it doesn't mean the, the, the meaning of some of the muhaddithin they say oh sunnah is of all the narrations that, and the statements and the saying and the, of the Prophet وسلم, and his approvals 
that was transmitted from him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But rather, what Imam Barbahari meant by naming his book as Sunnah is that is more than that, more comprehensive than than that. It's the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his guidance and the guidance that his companions they were upon the Salaf of Salih follow upon. <clears throat> Whether in, in the creed, in, in belief, in i'tiqad, or in acts of worship, in fiqh, in manners, in etiquettes, character, all of it. So this is what he meant by the sunnah. Even though you're going to find out that Imam Barbahari, rahimahullah, he will mention some points of fiqh in this book of creed such as wiping on socks or the marriage of muta the temporary marriage that the shia do they still do only to refute some of the deviant sects mainly the shia because they're the one who have problem with these two with wiping on the hoof and they still do the temporary marriage So he mentioned those even though they are points of fiqh, but since they are adopted by some deviant sects, so he mentioned that to refute their positions and the falsehood they are upon. <clears throat> Likewise, the Sheikh Salah Fuzan says that you will find that certain points will be repeated in this book. That Imam Barbahari will mention certain points and later on in the book, you, he will bring them back again. It's not a mistake, or, but rather to put an emphasis or because <clears throat> the point that he mentioned has something to do with the previous one. So he bring the link, he link between them so that matter become even more clear uh, to understand. Or other than reasons that the ulama, they, when they explain, they will give you the reasons. And that's a benefit when you read, for example, the explanation of this book, the creed, by by more than one of the mashayikh. By more than one of the mashayikh. So they will give you, you get more benefits, alhamdulillah. You get more benefits alhamdulillah <clears throat> the said in general this is a very beneficial book this is a very beneficial book <clears throat> its importance comes from number one it is it is an old book it is it is from the time of the self Allah in the fourth this is this is one because the 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 the, the, the writer and the, the compiler of the book is Imam Barbahari is from the Salaf. He died in the year three hundred and twenty nine of the Hijrah. So that's one of the books of the Salaf who they learned and and take knowledge from the great scholars of Islam in that time and they transmitted the aqeedah the pure and clear creed that, that, that they learned from them <clears throat> so my Allah had mercy on him so he was a great imam as for sharh because in Arabic it said sharh as sunnah sharh usually mean explanation it means explanation. That's what sharh means. Usually, that's the main yani, meaning for it. But that's not what it means in here. But rather it means bayan, clarification. He's clarifying and bringing the, the sun, the, the creed that every Muslim should be upon. That every Muslim should be upon. <clears throat> He's not explaining a book, meaning explaining a book, no. But he's bringing the, the creed 
and the guidance, and that was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was upon his companions. He's making clear the way that the Muslim should be upon in all aspects of this deen of Islam. This is what it means from this book, Sharh al-Sunnah. <clears throat> also, Sheikh Fawzan says the, the early scholars of Islam from a Salaf, they used to call the books, they compiled books on Aqidah, on the Creed, but they called them Sunnah. Their books on the Creed explain the Creed that every Muslim should be upon, but they call them Kitab al-Sunnah. Like this book, Sharh al-Sunnah. Likewise, the Shaykh gave a few examples, like, for instance, uh, a Sunnah. There is a Kitab, a book called Sunnah. is called a Sunnah by uh, Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah. <coughs> this is a, uh, like the book, a Sunnah of Imam Ahmad. His son, uh, Abdullah, the son of Imam Ahmad, he was from the ulama as well, from the great scholars, and he has a book as well called the Sunnah, I mean, about the creed and the belief, sound belief as well. Uh, we have another book, a Sunnah of al Athram. We have Sharh Usul Atiqad, Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah of Imam al Lanikai. Likewise, the ulama of the Salaf, they used to call they used to call a sunnah or the aqidah, the creed, iman. They used to refer to it with the name iman. Okay? So you find in some of the books of the ulama, they will have a section that is called the book of iman. One of the famous books is Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih muslim Sayyid al-Bukhari, you will find in Sayyid al-Bukhari, Imam Bukhari has a book of Iman, Kitab al-Iman. And in it, likewise in Sayyid Muslim, there is Kitab al-Iman. And in them, in that section, they will, they called it the book of Iman, but they bring in them all of the narrations pertaining to the Aqidah, the creed, that every Muslim should be upon. <coughs> such as Iman Billah, having belief in Allah and His angels, in His books, the messengers, the last day, the Qadr, the good and the bad of it. And they call it Al-Iman. Likewise, some of the ulama of the Salaf, they call the Aqidah Sharia. Okay? They have books, they compile books about the creed, and they call it a Sharia. One of the famous books is the Sharia of Al Imam Al Ajuri. That was explain, explained by our noble Sheikh Al Alama Rabbi Ibn Hadi Mudhal in three beautiful, beneficial volumes. Al Dhariya. So this book of Sharia is the uh, of Al Imam Al Ajuri, Rahimullah Shafi'i, Imam Al Ajuri Shafi'i. <coughs> Likewise, some of the ulama, they compile books. Some of the ulama, some of the ulama, they name them a tawheed. They write a book of uh, aqidah, and instead of calling it Kitab al-Aqidah, they call it Kitab al-Tawheed. Like uh, Kitab al-Tawheed, or Imam ibn Khuzayma, and all the other Kutub al-Tawheed, the well-known books of Tawheed. And all of them about Aqidah, that which uh, a believer, uh, the Muslim, uh, settled, the belief that settled in his heart. And he worship Allah SWT based on that. <clears throat> now, these names here, Sunnah, uh, Iman, Sharia, Tawheed, all of them are they're different names, but they all have the same meaning. They are different names for one thing. 
There is no difference between them whatsoever. It's okay. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes one thing has different names. As long as you know the meaning, that's what's more important. Some people, they you find the Sheikh now is going to refute some of the wicked people who are not upon the manhood of the Salaf, deviant sects and deviant people who are upon other ideologies that oppose the way of the Salaf. They try to deny these names, Aqeed and Tawheed. They say, why you say Aqeed? Why you say Tawheed? There is no proof from Qur'an and Sunnah. He said, this Aqeed and Tawheed, they are not found in the Book of Allah, nor in the Hadith. So the Shaykh says, these people, they by doing this, they try to cast doubt amongst the Muslims. Because this Aqeedah refutes what they are upon. You see, once you study the Aqeedah of the Salaf, you will know what they are upon. They are upon something else. So now they want to cast doubt. They want to tell people that this, this Tawheed, whenever you see Book of Tawheed, Book of Aqeedah, you're like, oh no, this is not from Islam. This is not in Quran, it's not in, in Hadith. And, if, and then that's what they want, so that a person don't study the sound creed and then you, you that person will never be able to differentiate between what is right and what is wrong and therefore become an easy prey for those deviants and those people who are called to anything other than what the seller they were upon <clears throat> that's why they get mad because these books of aqidah and tawheed and sharia and sunnah Expose their falsehood and, devi and deviation. Expose their deviation and, and the battle that they are upon. These people, they want that. They says nobody should be refuted. Why you talk about this alim? This is a big alim. He has a lot of followers and you guys talking bad and refuting him. Listen. Uh, Big alim is not because how many followers he had. If he's if he's if he's upon Sunnah and upon the Tawheed, the sound creed, and he calls to that, and he warns again anything that opposes that. But then, Allah Musta'an and those who follow what they are upon, that's why you find that they hate some of the imma of Al Islam. They speak ill about them, like Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Qayyim, uh, and likewise uh, Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, and in our time the ulama of Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah, like Sheikh Al Baz, Ibn Uthaymin, Al Bani, Fawzan, Rabi'ah, Muqbil, and other than them, they speak ill about them because they expose what they are upon. They expose what? they are upon. <clears throat> so a Muslim should not pay attention to what they say. Read these books of Salaf, especially the book of the Salaf. Read them about the Aqeedah because that's the foundation of your religion. If the foundation is strong, everything, alhamdulillah, that you build upon will, will maintain and stays with you and you will benefit from it. But if the Aqeedah is shattered, you can build nothing on it. And even if you manage to build, everything is going to go down. So, the Sunnah, the Creed, Iman, this is something that the ulama and the Ummah, for centuries, they all read books about this and compile books and teach and study these books. So you shouldn't pay attention to certain individuals these days now they are like now there is no such thing so that now these books of creed of sharia of of sunnah of aqidah of iman of tawheed through them by allah's leave subhanahu wa ta'ala the muslim will be able to differentiate between the truth and falsehood 
between Huda and Dalar, guidance and misguidance. But these individuals, they just want the people to stay ignorant. They just want to gather more people because they, they have political, like Ikhwan al-Mublisin, Ikhwan al-Muslimin, their political agenda. They don't care who who is who, what creed, as long as they have a lot of people that will vote for them. That as long as they have enough people to vote for them to win, they don't care. Shi'i, Sunni, Mu'tazili, Ash'ari, Zindiq, Mulhid, Atheist, a righteous, corrupt person, they don't care. As long as they are with them. That's why, that's why they don't care about the Aqeedah, because if they start teaching Aqeedah, a lot of people, people, they're not going to be together because a Sunni is not going to be with the Shi'i. And the person who's upon the Aqeedah or the Salaf, he never going to put a hand with the Shaf, Shi'i, Rafidi, or Ash'ari, or Mu'tazili, or Khariji. But those who go with the Ikhwan, they act like we're all Muslims. And they put hands in hands for different reasons, Allah. But them, this Mubtadi'ah, they're like, no, we don't supposed to bring subjects that divide the Muslims. We're supposed to keep the Muslims united. Don't bring no Tawheed, Aqeedah, Sunnah, uh, this, because this thing's gonna, yani, not all everybody's gonna be on, on this, on these topics, so we shouldn't bring these topics. Because we want the Muslims to stay together and united. The Sheikh said we say to them, the Muslim they will never be united except upon sound creed. They're never gonna be united. The unity that is pleasing to Allah, the unity that is legislated for us, never ever without the sound creed. The sound creed that which gathered and united and unified the Sahaba <coughs> they were divided as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about their affairs in Surah Ali Imran verse 103 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ <coughs> and remember the favor of Allah upon you when you were enemies one to another but he has joined your hearts together, soften and unite your hearts. The Sheikh Sahih Rozan said, What is it that unite the Sahaba and their hearts? They were fighting one another from different tribes, nothing but war and hatred and enmity. But what is after? And then. They become brothers to one another, loving one another. They forgot about the years of fighting and division and hatred and animosity. They forget about all those wars that they had. What, what is that? What changed them? This aqeedah that the Prophet ﷺ called them to and it was settled in their hearts. The meaning of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. <coughs> They understood it clearly. They didn't say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, but they understood it clearly. So once again, the Sheikh mentioned, and this is something very important, he said, nothing, nothing, period, unite the Muslims except the sound creed. Nothing will bring might, unity and might and power and success and victory to the Muslims except the sound creed but if they are different in their beliefs and their creed this one is a Khariji, this one Mu'tazili, Ash'ari, Sufi, Rafidi, Jahmi, Kada and then they want to be united he said they will never be united ever ever it's not gonna happen so now, if they differ among themselves in, ma in matters of fiqh, points of fiqh, in, in which it's okay for them to differ, okay, there is no clear proof to support one of the opinions, that's okay. Sometimes you find a point of fiqh, like in tahara, salat, or something like that, 
some points so you know this might have this ulama this alim says now this is how we're gonna do it this is how we've done why he says because i have this hadith another alim he has another hadith or that's what he understood alhamdulillah it's okay this is jihad sa'ikh and they continue to be upon the same creed but different aqidah that's not permissible it's not permissible Cannot say, look, you have your creed, we're happy for you, we have another creed. That's not permissible in Islam. In Salat Nam, if somebody, for example, after raising from Rukur, some they put their hands back on the chest, some they put them to the side. Alhamdulillah, it's okay, you're not going to tell this person you're a Mubtidya. You're not a Salafi because he does that. But if somebody tell you now, listen, this creed of the Salaf, there is no such thing. Actually, the Shia way is the way. The Ja'fari way is okay. Like Estes and them try to push. Huh? Then he says, no, no, no. Come on, man. Okay, this is, this is not like, this is, no, that's not right. Cannot, Muslims cannot differ in Aqidah. And those who differ in Aqid, they will never be united. They will never be together. Even if people try to bring them together, they will never be together. They may have them in their bodies in one room, but their hearts are not on the same thing. Because the one who wants to bring Muslims who have different creeds and different belief and the same and, 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 and say they're united, is like someone who's trying to bring the opposites together someone who's going to say oh subhanallah uh, we have a nice cookout yeah we have a beautiful cookout as a community when he says in a day and a night he says it was day or was night which one he says both both it was day and it was night and then you're like listen is it day or is it night yeah same way like these people, they want to bring the Muslims who have different creeds and uh, the people, those who are upon Sunnah would be Mubtadi'a, those who are upon the creed of the Salaf, or those who are upon the creeds of deviant people. It's not going to happen. It's like someone who wants to have like water and fire on the same bucket. It's not going to happen. <clears throat> The Sheikh says, if these individuals, let's say if they are sincere and they really, really care about the Muslims and their unity, and they really want the Muslims to be united, then they have to start where all prophets start, and our noble prophet Sallallahu start correcting the creed, calling the people to the sound creed. Al-Aqidatu Awwala The Creed That's it some, some of deviant sects They don't care about the Creed They teach them politics and this and that And the ruler is not Hakimiya And all of these things They don't teach Aqidah They don't teach the Creed That's why Muslims they are in what they are in right now Many in numbers but they have no weight whatsoever, and nothing is going to change until the Muslims change their way. They have to turn back to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, with the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih, until the the books of Aqidah and Creed are being taught in the masajid, in the schools, in the curriculums, in our homes. Then the Muslim they're gonna continue to be like foam like that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring the Muslims back to the creed, to the sound creed. And may Allah protect us from the people of deviation and innovations and the like. We're gonna stop here, inshaAllah ta'ala. We'll continue next time. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira.